the Smith family. We're really sad we can't be celebrating together today, but we wanted to wish you a happy Easter. Happy, happy Easter! I just wanted to wish everyone a happy Easter. We miss you guys. See you soon. Happy Easter Journey Church family. We miss y'all and we hope to be together soon. Hey, hey Journey Church. Church. Happy Easter from the raspberries. Hey Journey, this is the Gilberts and we sure do miss you. Have a happy Easter. Hey guys, it's the Key family and we just wanted to wish our Journey Church family a happy, happy Easter. Easter. Man, it's good to see those faces pop up on the screen today. I miss so much getting to be with you guys. Wherever you're viewing from, we're sure grateful. For us, we are at Hub City Brewery today. Our friends here have allowed us to set up and shoot. Wherever you're viewing from, I'm glad this is the day we can spend time together. It may not be exactly like the Easter you had planned, but I think it's going to be something that will be encouraging to you. Hey, I just want to encourage you about something. For us, uh, the last few weeks have been just as odd as they have for you. If you remember, we were finishing a series when all of this happened on generosity. And one of the things I want to do today is just say thanks for your generosity. You guys have shown up so well over the last few weeks. Your faith and your faithfulness sure mean a lot to us. We're not surprised because we expect that, but I just want to say we're so proud of you and how you're doing that. We always put a link at the uh, bottom of the screen, and you can always find us at ourjourney.com to look for a way for you to give. But we're just grateful that you keep investing. We've got a lot going on in our time together, so we'll kind of get that rolling. I just want to say this. When you left last Easter, when you, when you were walking out of church, would you have ever expected that you'd be sitting where you are today? Would you have ever thought you'd be dressed like you are today for Easter service on a Sunday? Well, I sure wouldn't have. But you know, I was thinking this Easter is not so far different from the original Easter. When you think about it, the people who followed Jesus were kind of on this really upward momentum. Things were taking hold. People were really getting excited about it. The Jesus economy was booming. And then all at once, he was arrested and taken and beaten and killed and put in a tomb. And the whole game had changed. It seemed like the darkest days ever. For the people who followed Jesus, it was such a letdown. They were frustrated, they were disillusioned, they were, they were discouraged about everything. The truth is, they didn't know what would come next, but then came Easter and that changed everything. I think what we can learn from Easter today will help change our perspectives as well. Matter of fact, we've got a song for you. We're gonna play it in just a second, and as you listen, I wonder if you do this, it has some powerful words that are especially in the front half of it. I wonder if you'll do this. When you hear one of those words that really rings true in your mind, would you just type it in the comment section below if you're on Facebook? It'll help us just to see what stands out to you. As you listen to it, I think you'll be encouraged. And then on the back half of it, the song ramps up and I think it's gonna bring some encouragement to you. So maybe this is the time to tune out the news and tune in something that's gonna help you feel a lot better. Welcome to Easter. Like my shame is gone I won't be shackled to the way I was Oh, I'm gonna live like my chains are gone Gone Now my sin is dead and gone And I'll sing hallelujah Done, done
don't think there's any better way to come out of that song. Uh, the idea that Jesus is, is risen, our sin, our shame, all of that is over and done with than to, than to lead into this idea. Because we as a church believe and exist that we're here to help people take their next step toward Jesus. And that's exactly what Sean is here for today. This is Sean, and uh, a little while back, uh, Sean, we met um, your family. Mm -hmm. Really known your sister for a little while. She's been coming to Journey. Uh, about a few months ago, we met mom and dad right here in the right. lobby. And uh, man, just unbelievable stuff. And what really we've surmised in this in conversation is that you didn't grow up around churches like this. No, not really. Um, I grew up in a Catholic church, and I never really just learned what it was like to have a true relationship with mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. And now that I know, I want more of it, and I want to take a further step into furthering my relationship with Jesus. That's huge. Because a few weeks ago, uh, we we baptized mom and dad in our second service, and it was kind of a mind-blowing experience for me because when I first met your dad, there was like, man, it was kind of a clear distance between where he was and where he is today. And right. uh, we've seen God do some pretty great things, and it's all been the kind of the, the result of, of your sister right. really wanting a relationship with Jesus and then praying for you guys. Can you tell yes. me just a second about that? Um, well, my sister for months prayed about my dad and my mom coming into journey and furthering their relationship. And finally they did. And then along with them, I kind of followed and mm. it's just been great from there. That's huge. So here's the thing. Uh, today you're coming to be baptized and you want to make a, a significant step in your faith toward Jesus. And so yes. we always ask people to repeat this thing. It's not magic words by any means, but it's just helpful for us to solidify what this real moment is about. So would you repeat after me? I believe that Jesus is the Christ. I believe that Jesus is the Christ. The Son of the living God. The Son of the living God. And I accept him as my Lord and Savior. And I accept him as my Lord and Savior. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So this might be the weirdest Easter ever. I mean, imagine this. Normally churches are packed to the brim this weekend. Extra services, extra people all crowded in. And restaurants and places like this one are, are full with people either getting ready to have record crowds, you know, pile in the door or getting ready to, to make record amounts of money, but not today. Today's strange because all of a sudden, as a result of all that we've been going through, the, the chairs are empty inside of churches and places like this are using their dining rooms to, to store stuff and kind of stage things to do to-go orders. It's a weird, strange kind of place because our fear of contamination kind of breeds emptiness in our spaces. I mean, think about your life, just how this works in regular everyday life in your relationships. A friend of yours is sick and you want to go see him, but you're afraid you're going to get it. So you don't go over to see them. And because of that, they feel kind of empty, like nobody cares about them. They feel alone. You know, another thing we've been accustomed to lately is this weird thing about people with gloves and masks on at grocery stores and gas stations and places just serving us with personal protective equipment, stuff that we've always gotten used to seeing at the doctor's office or at the dentist's office. Now all of a sudden we're seeing it at gas stations and grocery stores. It's kind of weird because not only has our fear of contamination kind of bred emptiness in our culture, it's also bred distance from other people. There's this buffer between us and the people around us. It's weird, isn't it? I mean, it's an odd place in our lives, but we do the same thing in our everyday lives. We have somebody who's maybe blown their life up with addiction and you don't know what to say. You, you kind of, I don't know how to approach it. I don't know how to bring it up. And you're a little bit nervous and a whole lot angry at them, honestly, for messing things up and, and you don't know what to say. And so you just kind of keep your distance. And then over time, that relationship that's so valuable winds up just becoming a non-existent thing because our fear has really kind of bred this distance between us. You know, it's amazing because that's not anything like 
what Jesus does for us. You see, we all have this thing in our life, this, let's call it a disease. The Bible calls it sin. And really, sin kind of gets this hard kind of list sign of thing set up with it sometimes where people think, well, this is a sin and this is not a sin. But that's not how the Bible really talks about sin. Sin is really our efforts in our own life to make life work without really having to depend on Jesus. All the things that are on the no list or the yes list, those kinds of things that are sins in our lives are really just ways of us trying to kind of like live out life or make life work without ever trying to need Jesus. And here's the worst part about it, that our efforts to try and live life without needing Jesus really keep us from ever really getting to know Jesus. But here's the best part. We all have this disease and it resides in every one of our lives. But instead of keeping his distance from us, instead of pushing us away and putting buffers between us or creating that emptiness, Jesus doesn't push away, he steps in. There's this verse in Romans, Romans chapter five, verse eight. I, I love it, it's tattooed on my arm. And it says this, that God demonstrated his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's pretty powerful if you really think about it, that God doesn't just feel love for us or have love for us or talk about his love for us. God demonstrates his love for us in that while we were still sinning, while we were in the act of pushing away from him, while we were living out our disease, he does exactly the opposite of what I would do. He dies for us, not me. Man, if I were Jesus, I, I'd be like, look, I try to tell you to do things and depend on me. If you don't wanna do them, man, do your own thing. I'll be right here when you get back. But not Jesus. He doesn't sit in quarantine. He doesn't sit distanced from us in isolation. He steps into our mess in an effort to heal our mess. That's a big deal. Now I wanna share a story with you that really isn't gonna sound all that Eastery. I mean, what is, is that even a word? But like Eastery sentence, the, like the, the day we talk about Easter, we talk about, about the death or the burial or the resurrection of Jesus. But today I wanna to just shift gears just a tiny little bit, because this is a weird Easter. I wanna take us like to this passage in Matthew chapter eight. And it's just a few short verses, but I wanna read it to you. It says this, when Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds had followed him. That's an Easter sounding thing, right? Large crowds. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and he said, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. I wanna stop for a second, cause that's a crazy sentence. A man with leprosy, that's like our everyday thing right now. Now, the coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you wanna call it, the Rona, you know, it's nothing like leprosy. I mean, this is a, a disease that was literally eating away at not just the flesh, but the bones and the structure of human beings. So, so they're, they're skin and their bones would begin to rot to such a, an extent that their fingers, their toes, their arms, their legs would just begin to fall off. So this man comes up to Jesus and he walks up to him and he says, and he kneels down before me, he says, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. He doesn't tell him how to make him clean. He just says, if you're willing, you can do it. And I want you to look at what Jesus does in response. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. That's weird. Now, I gotta be honest with you, I'm not God. That would be clear probably, right? But the truth is that like what he does here is, is powerful because the man doesn't say, if you're willing to touch me, I could be clean. He doesn't even tell Jesus anything about how he would carry it out. And here's the other thing that's important. Jesus doesn't have to do that. He's God. He's 100% God. He could heal him from a distance. He could email it in. He could call. He could like. He could FaceTime or Zoom call his healing in. Right. He doesn't have to do any of that stuff. But he doesn't. The Bible says that Jesus reached out his hand and touched him. I don't know about you, but that is about an Eastery story to me, because that's really what this whole story of of of. of healing, what Easter is really all about, is just about that same exact thing. Jesus loving us enough to accept us where we are, but he loves us so much that he refuses to leave us there. He reaches out and touches us. What, what, what 
Easter is really all about. At the end of the at the end of the day, today really is a great celebration of Easter because it's not about Jesus sitting in isolation, distance from us, light years away or in another place. He, he enters into our mess. Now, I want you to really capture this. This is important. Jesus took on our mess, our brokenness, our disease. Jesus took on our disease on Friday so that he could heal it on Sunday. I'm gonna say it again because I want us to get that. Jesus took on our disease on Friday so that he could heal it on Sunday. Look at what happens. I mean, Jesus takes on sin. We call it Good Friday. He stretched out his arms. He gave his life to redeem us from our, our independence. That's really what sin is, isn't it? It's our independence. It's our saying, I got this. I don't need you. And he's saying he redeems us from our own isolation and independence and gives his life to take that on to himself on Friday so that he could heal it on Sunday. Now listen, I love Easter Sunday. It's like, it, it's the Super Bowl of church. It's the best day of the year for me because I love big crowds of people. I love big gatherings. I love celebrations and loud music and energy and excitement and passion and cheering and all those great things. But here's the thing that's interesting. This Easter right now, alone, quiet, this is more like the first Easter. You know what's interesting to me is for my whole life, I've processed Easter like it happened that when we heard about why do you look for the living among the dead? It happened in my mind when, when these ladies showed up to the tomb and they're looking for Jesus' body and the angel asked them, why do you look for the living among the dead? But Easter didn't happen then. Easter happened alone in the dark, in this tomb. Because there was, for three days, this darkness that covered the body of Jesus. Jesus was dead. He had taken on our sin on Friday and was gonna heal it on Sunday. And Sunday morning happened, the sun came up and his body came to life while he was alone. He didn't need a big crowd to celebrate Easter. He didn't need a big crowd and a bunch of people cheering and a lot of energy to give us life. He gave us life completely without help. That's exactly what we need to recognize in him, is that he came to give us life, the life that he originally offered, the life that we walked away from when we broke it with our sin, when we said, no, I don't really need you. I don't wanna do it your way. I wanna do it my way. Jesus gave his life so that you and I could have the real life we were created for, the life of interdependence and relationship and, and dependence on who he is. Man, I don't know about you, but that's a powerful Easter story to me. And it's really what we are gonna celebrate even together virtually, isn't that weird? In communion. We're gonna take communion together. I know that sounds weird because you're normally used to sitting in a row and taking a tray and handing it to the person next to you and a little piece of bread and a little cup of juice that represent for us the body and the blood of Jesus broken and poured out for us. Today, we're gonna do it a little differently. We've asked you before this moment to make sure that you've got some, some like juice and some crackers. It doesn't have to be grape juice and it doesn't have to be crackers that taste bad. It can be anything. You can use water and, and chicken, chicken and a biscuit crackers or, or goldfish or whatever you've got around because it's not so much important what the elements are. What's important for us is what the elements represent. So your family gathered around right now I'm gonna invite you to take communion with us. Just to take that little piece of bread, recognize its significance and its value, and that little cup of juice, and recognize its significance and its value, and take these in remembrance of me. We're gonna step into Chuck's house right now. I mean, we're just gonna gather with his family. And as Chuck leads his family, we're gonna allow his family to lead our church family. All right, guys, we've got an awesome opportunity to come together this Easter and celebrate together by taking communion uh, with our family as well as our church family. But before we get started with that, Kennedy, would you mind reading your verse from 1 Corinthians? For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. 
On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. All right, Journey Church, if you would join our family as we take this bread that represents the body of Christ, broken for us, because he wasn't afraid to step into our mess. Julian, would you mind finishing that passage from 1 Corinthians for us? In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Once again, Journey, join us. The blood of Christ poured out for you because he wasn't afraid to come in contact with your brokenness. How awesome is it to watch a family take communion together? It's a little bit outside our norm, but if you're sitting there by yourself or you're with other people, there's nothing more natural than being able to take communion in your home. One of the things I love about communion is it brings focus right where it needs to be. Have you ever looked at a photo where the photographer actually, he put the, the main object in just perfect focus, but he allowed all the things on the outside edges just to be blurry a little bit? I really think that's how we were intended to live life, is to keep the main thing crystal clear and everything else while still present to become blurry. In times like ours right now, we could sure use a healthy dose of that. That is the beauty of Easter. That is the beauty of hope. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to focus on the main thing. Does it mean all of the other things around us go away? Well, of course it doesn't. It just means they become a little bit blurrier. I, I, there's an old song that says it this way. It says, my hope is built on nothing else than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. That is whole, the whole meaning of that communion time. It's that I put my faith and I put my hope in what Christ has done for me. My hope is not in the CDC. It is not in the WHO. It's not in GOV. It's not in a check somebody's gonna send me. It's not in somebody else making decisions. Those may all be important things too, but if I focus on those, then that's what I'm gonna to lean toward. So today our goal has been, can we just focus on the hope that comes through Jesus Christ? A lot of us, it would be easier to yell at the darkness and all of the things that are wrong, but maybe we would be better served if we could just put our focus and our faith in what Jesus has done for us. As a matter of fact, we wanted to kind of roll out the back end of our time together with a song today. I think as you listen to it, it will be just what you need to help refocus what's most important in life. As you hear it, I think it'll encourage you.
Hey, thanks for hanging out with us today for our journey Easter online experience. So glad you could be with us. We thought it would be kind of fun if some of us could hang out afterward. Matter of fact, if you'll look in the description on your screen, you can click the link there and it'll just be a chance for us to chat a little bit together since we don't really have a lobby to stand around and talk for a few minutes before you head out the doors. Maybe this will be the next best thing. We'd sure enjoy it. We can spend just five, five or 10 minutes together. So take advantage of that. Otherwise, I hope your Easter is a great one. Love the people around you. We'll talk to you next week.